These days, Atlanta might be the most important city in the hip-hop world. It's the birthplace of trap and home to some of the biggest names in rap today, including Young Thug, Future, and 21 Savage. But in the early 90s, most of the rap world viewed the American South as an irrelevant backwater, a footnote compared to the pillars of hip-hop culture that were New York and Los Angeles. All of that began to change when a pair of rappers who went by the name Outkast hit the scene. Their 1994 debut, Southern Playalistic Cadillac Music, shocked the rap world with its virtuosic flow, playful rhymes, and unapologetically Southern sensibilities. It lit a fire in the South that still burns to this day and changed rap forever. But Outkast's recording career didn't start with Southern Playalistic Cadillac Music. It started six months earlier when their label approached them with a strange request. They wanted Outkast to write a Christmas song. Let's take a closer look. In 1993, the production crew Organized Noise had convinced L.A. Reid of LaFace Records to sign Outkast. It was a huge break for the duo, who were in such dire straits that they had turned to drug dealing in order to afford studio time. But even though Reid signed Outkast, he wasn't giving them much support. Before he'd let them do anything, he insisted that Outkast contribute a song to the label's upcoming Christmas album, A LaFace Family Christmas. Big Boy told Vinyl Me Please that it felt like Reed was trying to kill their career before it even took off. It wasn't that there hadn't been Christmas rap songs before, Run DMC's Christmas in Hollis was a mild success six years earlier, but this was 1993, the same year that Wu-Tang released Enter the 36 Chambers. If Outkast wanted the South to be taken seriously by the wider rap world, a Christmas song wasn't the way to do it. You can't exactly put Jingle Bells up against Protect Your Neck and Hope to Survive. Still, Outkast knew that opportunities to break through were few and far between in the music industry. So they took the lemons that LaFace gave them and started squeezing them for all the lemonade they were worth. Rather than record an empty, novel Christmas track, Outkast decided to do what they did best, sing about their own experience. Living in poverty in Atlanta was a far cry from the idyllic pictures of Yuletide usually given in seasonal songs. Christmas is typically portrayed as a temporary respite from life, but when you're struggling to put food on the table, you don't get that privilege. Andre explains this in his opening verse, setting the scene with a subversion of a classic Christmas song. Yeah. It's beginning to look a lot like wood. Follow my every step. Take notes on how I crap. I was about to go in depth. This is the way I greet my season. Here's my ghetto rep. I kept to say the least. No, no, it can't cease. By the end of the verse, it seems like Dre is explicitly calling out the label who expected a novelty song from him. So tell me, what did you expect? You thought I'd break my neck to help y'all deck the, the, oh no, I got other means of celebrating. I'm getting blizzard at Hoja. I got some hoochie waiting. I made it through another year. Can't ask for nothing much more. It's outcast for the the books I thought you knew, so now you know. Let's go. When Big Boy comes in on the second verse, he also starts out with references to Christmas songs before getting into his real concerns about the day. The liquor store is closed, and the chitterlings he's got cooking are stinking up his house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, I do some things more different than I used to, cause I'm a player doing what the players do. The package store is closed. Okay, my day gets ruined. This is ridiculous. I'm getting serious. I'm getting curious, cause the house is smelling sick. The chitlins old as vicious. By Singing about their own experiences, Outkast are highlighting the discrepancies in American life. The reality is that most Christmas media is targeted at the middle class, showing a peaceful suburban utopia. But that image doesn't ring true for so many who are economically and racially disenfranchised. Ain't no chimneys in the ghetto, so I won't be hanging my socks on no chimney. And to someone who has to work selling drugs on Christmas Day, this discrepancy becomes all the more clear. I'm wide open on the freeway, my pager broke my vibe, cause a junkie is a junkie 365. It's just another day it worked to me, the spirit just ain't in me, grab my grab my blend my ounce, see what the junkies gotta give me, cause it's like that. <laughs> yeah. But all of this isn't to say that Outkast didn't know how to celebrate. 
In the chorus of the song, outcasts sing about the Players' Ball, a legendary meeting of pimps that started in Chicago in 1974. For Dre and Big Boy, the Players' Ball represents a haven of black culture, an imagined celebration that truly does provide respite from the struggle and hustle of everyday life in poverty. Originally, the chorus of Players' Ball mentioned Christmas Day, but Outkast changed it to Every Day. This gave it a year-round appeal and prevented it from being boxed into the holiday music genre. This decision helped Outkast's career take off. They handed their song over to LaFace and the label included it on the album. But on the original release, they got almost no respect. Their tiny image is barely visible on the album cover, and much more attention is given to Tony Braxton, TLC, and Usher. But it wasn't those artists that had Atlanta DJs spinning a LaFace family Christmas every day. The city's radio DJs recognized the truth spoken in Players Ball, and couldn't help but display Andre and Big Boy's incredible flows. The song started to become a surprise hit, and L.A. Reid realized he had something on his hands. So, on November 19, 1993, he chose to release Players Ball as a standalone cassette tape, and shortly thereafter, he brought in Puff Daddy to direct a video. This helped propel the song to number 3 on Billboard's Hot 100, and eventually would lead to it going gold. But more importantly, it opened Reed's eyes to the talent he really had on his hands. He greenlit Outkast's debut album, and the rest is history. Southern playalistic Cadillac music blew up, establishing Outkast as one of the most exciting new acts in all of music, and putting Atlanta on the hip-hop map. And since then, the city hasn't stopped. Today, the South is a hip-hop epicenter, and OutKast are one of the best-selling hip-hop groups of all time. It was an outcome that I don't think anyone could have predicted when L.A. Reid asked OutKast for a Christmas song. The sort of thing that you might be tempted to describe as a Christmas miracle.